please let's welcome Engineer Tele Kuru once again. He has been planning it and he has been, he's made sure he's here to implement this event today in the opening ceremonies. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much for coming despite all odds. Your Excellency, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellency, the executive governor of River State and your beloved wife, Your Excellency, my colleague from Bangkok, Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me, on behalf of the executive governor of River State, the right of Road to Mutual Abenchi, very, very warmly welcome each and every one of you. You are welcome to Port Harcourt. I was just telling a story to somebody this morning that my case is almost like the case of the woodpecker who prided himself and boasted severally that the day his mother will die, he certainly will open a large part of the wood and bury his mother. And then incidentally, the mother died one day, and then he had ball in his mouth, so he could not even dig the ground. But I think I surpassed the woodpecker because I'm here, in spite of all the disadvantages. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, let me, on behalf of the committee, once more graciously thank you. And thank you, and thank you for all you have stood for since 2007, when, by the grace of God, you first took over the reign of power in River State. For the purpose of those who may not know, in 2007, Port Harcourt was the most unsafe place in Nigeria and perhaps in the world. In 2007, to walk around the city of Port Harcourt, you must put your two arms up. Otherwise, you are likely to be taken for a militant and perhaps shot. The militants had rain over Port Harcourt. They were shooting at random. They kill at will, and nobody could do anything. Your Excellency, that was the time you became the governor of River State. And then you stood your ground and said, never will this happen again. This cannot go on under you. You stood your ground against all odds. Every person in this country told you you were on your own, that there is no way you can fight these militants. But you stood your ground. I remember one particular occasion when there was shooting elsewhere. Early in the morning, about 7 o'clock, when you were doing your morning exercise, and without a gun, in short, you jumped into a vehicle, drove the vehicle, straight down to Agri Road and was asking who shot gun in this place. Meanwhile, he had no gun on him. He had nothing to even defend himself. But it shows what the will of a man can do. It shows what difference the will, power you put into governance can bring about when you put those will. Your Excellency, from that day on, the military took you serious, the police took you serious, and the rest of this country, including the presidency, told you you cannot do it. But by the grace of God, nine months down the line, every person thought that that's the best thing that has ever happened to this country, and they joined you. Today, we are happy to announce that there is no more militancy in the Niger Delta. The end of militancy in the Niger Delta stopped, started here, and eventually spread to the rest part of this Niger Delta. 
Your Excellency, immediately after that, part of the things you did was to diagnose why did we have militancy? And that directed you to deciding that the best way to ensure that this society is never exposed anymore to militancy or all such crimes is to ensure that the people are educated. Based on that, Your Excellency, you took education and put on your front burner and you pursued education with everything in you. Your resources, your time, for once in this country, we saw primary schools that look like primary schools elsewhere in the world, not in Africa. Your Excellency, it wasn't surprising then when just last year, UNESCO was looking for where to name as the world book capital, that they had no difficulty deciding that having done all you have done in education, physically, in terms of material structure, and even the software in terms of human elements, it wasn't difficult for them to decide that Port Harcourt is the best place. Again, Your Excellency, you have brought glory to Africa. You have brought glory to Sub-Saharan Africa. You have brought glory again to Nigeria. You have brought glory to your people in River State. Thank you so much. When Father God became the World Book Capital, you put all your resources again and said it must work. And Your Excellency, I must say that it is working. Because today, officially, Port Harcourt is being declared the world over as the world book capital. And today, again, you are saying or sending a clear message to the rest of this country. There is only one way to go. And that one way to go is education, education, education. Book is the key. That is the message you are sending today. The surgeons in the northern part of this country can only be brought under check if all Nigerians can adopt a book. The message is very clear. Your Excellency, thank you. Again, you have shown this country the way to move. I'm not unaware that they will have some reluctance just like before following you, but I know that at the end of the day, every person will see the light and then to, towards this direction. Thank you and God bless you. The Deputy Governor of uh, Rivers State and Chairman Port Harcourt World Book Capital 2014 Organizing Committee, Mr. Tele Ikuru. Well, uh, a quote from him does state, he said, for me, this nomination is the icing on the cake of all the work this administration has done to promote education. And probably one of the ways that has been done is the guarantee of uh, security, both in Port Harcourt, the state capital, and River State at large. For UNESCO and Federal Ministry of Education, Let's welcome Prince o James, please, for the goodwill message. Your Excellency, Right Honorable Rotimi Amechi, Executive Governor of River State. Your Excellency, the former Head of State of Federal Republic of Nigeria, General Abdusalam Abubakar, Chairman of the Education.